my old guitar teacher, we used to uh, joke around and we'd say there's the three, P, the three P's of practice, 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 and practice. The picking hand, if you get that down more than this hand, this one can always do this stuff. But if you can't pick the amount of notes you're trying to play, it's all about this hand here for me. Hello, uh, my name's Taj Farrant, and this is On the Record with Ultimate Guitar. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us today, Taj. I appreciate it. Thank you for having us. So, where are you at? Are you on tour? Uh, yes, we're on tour at the moment. We are in Ohio. How's now, the tour going? Yeah, the tour's going really good. Um, we've been out for about two months almost now, so yeah. So I saw something on uh, Facebook or Instagram. Uh, I saw you got to meet uh, Joe Bonamassa. How did that, uh, how'd that yeah, go? Yeah, that was really cool. Um, yeah, it's cool getting to see someone that I uh, look up to like that. So, yeah. I would imagine at this stage of your career, you've probably met a lot of the, the bigger stars or the people that maybe you looked up to when you were first learning to play guitar. Um, yeah. Are there any that stand out to you that were really special? Um, probably Santana was the most, like, special in that, you know, like, people that I've met, so, yeah. Did he give you any advice as far as playing or even business advice or anything like um, that? He didn't give me any business advice, um, he gave more of that stuff to Dad. But, um, there was, like, one or two things he said, it was, like, don't do drugs and don't fly in helicopters, so, yeah, that was kind That's of what he advice. told me. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of flying, you're originally from Australia, for those who don't know. Yep, uh, I'm have from you Australia. officially moved to the U.S. Um, now? Yeah, we have officially moved to the U.S. Uh, when the tour started, so three months ago. Yeah. Do you have a base of operations? Are you living in California, or are you guys just kind of touring um, around? We're just going around everywhere at the moment. We are thinking of, like, we're thinking of places to live, so yeah. Yeah. So, uh, as you mentioned, you're touring around. Uh, have you been recording at all? Uh, can we expect another single to come from you? Um, yeah, working on the album uh, soon. We've got a pretty busy tour coming up um, after this one, so, yeah. Do you have a date for the next single? Are we able to say when that is? Or? Oh, a date for the next single, uh, it'll be about a month or so, probably around there, for Christmas time at least, so, yeah. I heard uh, you have some plans to do a Stevie Ray Vaughan tribute uh, in December as well. So you got a busy December. Yeah, thing. yeah. So um, we are doing a Stevie Ray Vaughan tribute in uh, Texas, and uh, in Buda, Texas. So yeah, I'm only doing one of them, so it'll be like a one and done type thing. So yeah. Is that just going to be a show? Are you live streaming it? Is there um, a way that people can't I'm get? I'm not to sure Texas if we're going to be live streaming it, but we we might. I don't know. And I know for many of us guitar players, Stevie Ray Vaughan was such a such an inspirational uh, yeah. player. Uh, yeah. What sort of impact did he have early on in your career? Uh, he had quite a lot. Well, he has more of a impact on my career now, more than earlier throughout my career. Because earlier throughout the start of my career, it was more like rock and like Slash and ACDC. And then as I got into the blues, it was like Gary Moore and um, uh Stevie Ray Vaughan, so yeah. So I would imagine you're going to be playing a lot of Stevie Ray Vaughan songs. Uh, are there uh, some yeah. that you're just learning now for the first time? Yeah, I'm learning a couple of, I'm learning like four or five for the new show. I'm learning um, like Cold Shot and stuff like that. So they're, they're really cool. So yeah. Are there some that you've found to be really challenging that you've never tried to play before and you're like, wow, this is this is a tough one? Yeah, there's one I actually have a problem with and like it's the timing thing. It's a testify because it comes in on like a weird time signature. So yeah. How did you learn to play guitar? Were you did you learn by ear? Did you use tablature? Um, so I can't read music. Like I, I can kind of read music. I can't read tabs that well. Uh, it was more ear, and Dad obviously taught me a lot as well. But um, most of it, like, I learned the scales, and I knew what I wanted it to sound like. So as long as I knew where I was playing, I was kind of good from there. And uh, what are you using for gear these days on tour and in the studio? My live rig is a 2x12 um, uh, Wizard cab. 
and it's got a red and a cream in it, like a red and a cream back in it from Celestian. And I use a Freedman or a Wizard Head uh, 50 watts. Yeah. And uh, what are you using for guitars and pedals? So guitars and pedals, I have an arrangement of pedals. So I've got a lot of different pedals. Um, they're like Boss, Freedman, um, Strymon, uh, Tube Screamers and stuff like that. So yeah, uh, guitars would be Kiesels and Fender and Gibson pretty much. So yeah. When you do the Stevie Ray Vaughan show, will you be playing a Strat or one of the uh, one of your Kiesels? My main guitar is a Fender Strat at the moment, but I've broken the uh, um, toggle switch, so I have to replace that. But it's uh, well, not me, Dad will. Um, so yeah, uh, but I play Fenders mostly. I'm actually building um, uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan's Butter or Scotch, one of the names, like the cream one with the red pickup. Wow. Yeah. Are you just uh, gathering the parts, or are you having it built by? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna build it. Well, me and Dad will like we'll find the guitar and put the neck on and stuff like that. So yeah, that's super cool. Yeah, so it's a very DIY operation. You guys kind of it, it must be really nice to tour with your family. Um, yeah, your sister it is. drumming. Yep, Giselle drums. Um, she opens a show because she wanted to be like on her own tour as well. So yeah, I said you can open the show if you wanted to. So yeah. That's got to be kind of cool. Are, are there some, I would imagine it's a bit challenging sometimes to not have, you know, the tour bus, the, the supporting bands, to just have it be a family affair. But that's got to be really cool to have it such a tight knit group. Yeah. 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 It's, it's good having family on the road with us. So, yeah. So I want to take it all the way back. I guess it's not that far for you because you're quite young. Uh, but Thank what was you. your first guitar? And uh, uh, what was your first guitar? And what were the, some of the first songs you tried to learn? Oh, yeah, my first guitar was an Ibanez Prestige. It was um, it was it's it was really bad, but it sounds really good still because it had like V eight and V seven pickups, and like they they're, they're still they I don't think many guitars have those anymore, and they're really lightly potted and stuff. But I've had it for so long, and it was hanging on a wall in the heat. All of the wax out of the pickups has come out. Um. It, it's funny, and yeah, and the first song I probably learnt was Shook Me All Night Long, I think. As I understand it, that was kind of the band that inspired you to uh, want to pick up a guitar and learn it seriously. Uh, ACDC was the first band I saw, and live, obviously, and I was like, yeah, I want to do that, so. Do you still feel as inspired as you did, uh, you know, every time you pick up a guitar to play it? Yeah, um, if not more now, because I get to play in front of um, people. Has it been uh, a good crowd response and, and things like that, meeting all your fans? Yeah, uh, on this tour we've sold out um, uh, uh, more than half of the shows. So, um, yeah, it's been quite a good crowd response as well. Everyone's really loud. So, And uh, we're doing another show in Cincinnati soon, and it'll be our first like big um, theatre as well. Are you going to visit the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Have you been there yet? We have done the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And to be honest, I was kind of disappointed because, like, um, like it was really cool there. But, like, Stevie Ray Vaughan and Gary Moore didn't have a part in it at all. I reckon they should have those them in there. Um, I did, like, they did put Robert Johnson in there, though, so that's cool. Yes, absolutely. You know, we, we talked about, you know, you're going to be rolling out with some singles. Will there be a full-length record at some point? Is that something that's on the horizon that you're thinking about actively? Um, yeah, the the funny thing is I've written a lot of songs, but I don't think they're good enough to go into the album. Um, so I kind of just put them in the, oh, there's some random songs over there pile. But um, I have, I have the, I've got about four songs to put on the album at the moment and um it'll the album looks like it'll be early late next year so around like mid mid year next year do you have a record label that you're working with or is that going to be a self-release sort of thing yeah, it's a self-release i'm not with a record label um because i want to be able to own my own masters so yeah is the door closed to that or if uh, there's any um, executive listening that's uh, I don't really cover that part of my career 
Um, I'm on more of a show stuff. That's more mum's behalf. Uh, that was my only thing. I just wanted to own my own masters. So, yeah. So uh, you mentioned that you don't feel some of the songs are, are good enough. What to you constitutes a good song? It's weird because, like, the songs that I've released and I thought I, that I think are good enough to go onto the album, that all of those songs come in 15 minutes, like the whole song. And it was funny. Uh, like, the fast ones. And once I know, it's 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 like you know when it's a good song and you're like, okay, that'll work on the album. So, yeah. Uh, I really enjoyed the song. I, I enjoyed all your songs, by the way. Thank you. Great. I think you're a, a great songwriter, a great, uh, talented guitar player. So I, Thank I you. want you to continue. Um, I was especially struck with the song No Words. Um, I think just no because words. of the background. Um that you were able to turn this traumatic event uh, in your childhood into something so positive and beautiful. Uh, yeah, what was that I was, process for you? So, yeah, I used to get bullied quite a lot. And I was eight when I released that song. Uh, like, we never released it until I turned, like, 11 as well. But we had that song in the, like, random song pile. Um, uh, and I wrote it when I was eight because I used to get bullied quite a lot. And I... Uh, couldn't sing yet but I knew how to play guitar so I was like oh how about I make an instrumental and um yeah that kind of come along from there. Do you feel there's things that you're able to express through the guitar that you're not able to express uh, through words sometimes? Um yeah 100% you can express way more with the guitar than you can through words I think there's more there's more feel well to me there's more feeling in playing guitar than singing. Can we expect some more instrumental music from you, or do you think that the the album, um, uh, when it comes out, will have a lot more lyrics in it? Uh, there'll be a couple. There might be one or two more instrumentals that'll go onto the album because, like, Cruise is an instrumental, and that one was like an homage to Gary Moore, and that um, that one's going to go on the album as well. So yeah. Who are some other guitarists that really inspire you? Other guitarists, it'd be probably Jeff Healy. Um, Jeff Beck, uh, probably um, Steve Vai, I feel like he's more like uh, the Allman Brothers for songwriting, obviously. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I saw a thing where you uh, visited uh, Stevie's uh, headstone. We saw the statue and then we also saw the gravesite as well. So, yeah. I saw a picture you had a guitar. Did you did you play a song for Stevie? Uh, yeah, I played Lenny. Uh on I sat on the rock in front of it so yeah I played Lenny that's that's a cool moment I would imagine yeah it was it was quite quite cool so uh in your opinion what's the greatest guitar solo that's ever been recorded greatest guitar solo ever um Parisian walkways a hundred percent or I would say but um Parisian walkways by Gary Moore I love it I yeah, love, most people go for the the old standards, but that's a that's a classic that a lot of us forget about from time to time. Yeah, I like the live version better though because he holds that note for so long. So yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Um, so you're closing in on a million Facebook followers as well. Um, yeah, have you got there? Did we get? No, I, I haven't got to a million yet. I'm like literally four thousand followers away at the moment. So yeah. Do you have something planned for when you get there? Um, I th we'll probably have cake. Uh, even though I don't eat cake, I'm probably going to eat the cake. When you released the video for Tennessee Whiskey, did you did it surprise you how successful that got? Well, yeah, because the first ever video I put out, we put up just for like my nan and that to see, and we kind of did it with that one as well, but we just put it on there to see if anyone else would like it as well. And then um, it went kind of, as us, us Australians would say, it went schizo from there. So, yeah. Yeah, it certainly did. A fantastic video. Um, a lot of those, interpreting those vocal melodies is something that I, I hear a lot of guitar players doing nowadays, like uh, Paul Gilbert and, and some yeah. others. Sophie Lloyd's been doing it. Um, are there some singers that you really find just click with the with the guitar melodies when you're doing these covers. Um, 
I don't really listen to a lot of people for like singing and stuff, but like when I used to practice, when I well, when I practice like phrasing and stuff, I listen to like pop music and like Mariah Carey is like the queen of like phrasing. So yeah, there's a lot of like runs and it helps with your um, muscle memory as well. So on a day where you don't have a show or a gig, uh, how many hours would you say you practice guitar and what does a standard practice session look like for you? Um, standard practice session, that would probably be like four to five hours, maybe not even that much at the moment because I'm on tour. Um, but, uh, like an average one back home would probably be like two to three hours at the moment. And, um, I just like practice like scales and just keep your fingers and uh, stretching exercises as well. Uh, one thing I used to do, I'd just put my fingers up against the wall and I'd lean on my fingers to stretch them like that. So, yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. I, have, I have small hands, so I need to, I need all the help I can get. Yeah, I have really big hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do you have coming up for the rest of 2023, 2024? We've kind of covered a little bit of that, but what can people expect from you? Would we miss something? Uh, 2023, I've got uh, three shows left. So I have Cincinnati, uh, four shows. I have Cincinnati, Nashville, uh, Hopewell, Virginia, and then the Stevie Ray Vaughan one. And then 2024, I have a lot and I can't release a lot of it. So, yeah. Well, we're excited to see what's next for you. Um, Thank you. I always ask people this. Uh, do you have any advice to that kid who just picked up a guitar and he's trying to learn some songs? He doesn't really know where to start someone starting that musical journey my old guitar teacher we used to uh joke around and we'd say there's the three p the three p's of practice 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 and practice but um no a lot of a lot of it is your right hand if you get your right hand down your left hand will follow um or if look the picking hand if you get that down more than this hand this one can always do this stuff but if you can't pick the amount of notes you're trying to play um, so yeah, it's all about this hand here for me. Are there some techniques that you've been really working on getting better at? I mean, it's a constant evolution, our, our guitar playing. Yeah. So, uh, are there some things that you've been really practicing lately that we might hear in some future songs? A lot of it is more phrasing. I just want to, uh, like more licks, more, um, I listen to a lot of every kind of music and if you hear a nice melody, you can try and play it on guitar. And that's where a lot of ear training helps us a lot, a lot as well. So, do you have any tips for ear training? So one thing I, it's like scales. If you play the scales enough, you will know where the note is, and then that's kind of where my ear come in from a lot. But I kind of picked that up fast. So a lot of it's just listening to songs, and then. If you listen to the song enough, you'll hear the notes on your fretboard and you'll be like, oh, I know where to play that. So, yeah. And then uh, we, we have a lot of guitar players who listen to uh, these things and, and visit Ultimate Guitar. So is there someone that you would really like to collaborate with or that you hope to collaborate with in the future? Man, there's there's a lot. That's the thing. To be like, if I got to choose one person to collaborate with, it would probably be like Eric Johnson or something. It'd probably be Eric Johnson at number one or Steve Vai. Solid choices. Yeah. yeah. What is it about them that uh, you feel you could learn from those guys? Eric Johnson is like his tone. The tone from Eric Johnson is very nice. And then uh, Steve Vai, obviously, like all his his really technical stuff that he does throughout the songs, and even Joe Satriani as well, and even Joe Bonamassa's his um, songwriting as well so it's really nice well we appreciate you uh taking the time to chat with us today we appreciate the music you're putting out in the world please continue because it uh it does make a difference and you're inspiring people to pick up the guitar and that's thank you. Uh, that's a really great thing thank you so much also thank you for having me